grew up in Sydney, Australia, uh, always loving music. Um, grew up in a Christian home, so uh, that's a huge part of my story is uh, having the Bible read to me every night and praying with my parents. Uh, but then during my high school years, really kind of wandering away from, from that. Uh, I guess rebelling or whatever you'd like to call it, I was definitely doing that. Um, my parents kind of saw that this was happening and they gave me a book back then, a book about uh, Keith Green's life, No Compromise. I know a lot of people have, have been impacted by that book and I'm certainly one of those people. Uh, I read the story of his, his life, uh, his music. My parents actually had told me it was a story about a musician. They didn't tell me it was about a Christian musician. But as I read, that was the part that impacted me the most, is the Jesus he believed in. And I realized that wasn't a Jesus that I knew. And so I, I read through the Gospels and I uh, was convinced uh, about who Jesus says he is and what he's come to do and what he's done for us. And so as I saw that, the Christian music part of my love for music started to develop. And I found myself wanting to play songs by other Christian artists. And um, uh, a youth leader of mine had a, a collection of old CDs and uh, Randy Stonehill was this name he kept on bringing up. And I think he knew I loved playing guitar and thought that uh, Randy Stonehill's guitar playing might inspire me as well. And I, I listened and I started to teach myself Randy Stonehill songs and I get invited by my youth leader to play them for the youth group and then uh, other youth leaders found out I was playing songs and so they invited me to come and play for their youth groups. and. Uh, before I knew it, I was playing all these different places around Sydney, uh, playing other people's songs and desperately wanting to write my own songs. Uh, there were things I wanted to say that Randy Stonehill wasn't saying, Mark Hurd wasn't saying uh, in that moment. And so I wrote my first songs out of necessity, uh, needing something to, to convey you know, what was important to my heart at that time. Um, and people started to book me more than what I expected. Uh, I deferred university to, uh, to tour and to um, make my first CD um, and I mean I wish I could go around to everybody's house who bought that CD and take it off them or at least buy it back. Um, it's embarrassing the quality and everything but it was you know my, it was an honest attempt to you know answer the, the response that I was getting from people which was we want to take your music home. and. Uh, that's what got me started. I think I already know because I have been there too. Uh, to be honest, the first few years I didn't enjoy what I do um, from a logistics point. I, I loved being able to stand in front of people and communicate something of the truth and uh, to try and do that well. Um, but then I was driving long distances by myself. Um, all my friends were living the university lifestyle, they were having a great time, and I was stuck in some backwater town, you know, and it felt, um, it didn't, just didn't feel great. Um, a friend of mine started traveling with me for six months. He said, I will go to every single place that you play, and I'll be your companion on the road when we leave uh, a church. If it's great, we'll talk about how great it is. If it wasn't great, we'll talk about how bad it was. And that's exactly what I needed. Well, six months into that, uh, he went camping with a friend and was killed in a car accident uh, while he was doing that. And uh, that was probably the first time that I realized that God had given me a platform, even if I didn't enjoy it at that time, that he'd given me a platform in which to talk about things that really matter, uh, life and death stuff, um, to communicate the truth about Jesus. And at that point, everything shifted. Now it's an anchor, storm still right. I started visiting Nashville. I realized I had a lack of mentors in my life. I was by myself. Um, I was a very nervous Christian artist because I realized when you strap on a guitar and anything you say, most people take as gospel, even if it's wrong, just because you have a guitar strapped on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want that. I wanted what I said to be. Uh, true. I wanted people to be able to go away and read their Bible and see it there. And um, so I started visiting Nashville. I hung out with uh, older Christian artists like Michael Card, uh, Charlie Peacock, um, a bunch of guys who kind of mentored me and looked after me. I wasn't playing over here. I'd just come here to have a break and grow and then go back to Australia and use all their great ideas and pretend they were my own, you know, that kind of thing. Um, over the years, that kind of caused me to 
pursue uh, more truth and excellence, is how Mike Card would put it. And it's not good enough for something to be true. Um, when you look at the way that God does truth, he also does it excellently. Uh, his creation is beautiful and it's perfect. And that's what we should be striving towards. Um, and that was a, a good lesson for me to learn. I started to invest a lot of money in the CDs I was making as a way of trying to communicate both truth and excellence. This has actually been quite a long story, but long story short, um, I recorded a record in Australia which we really worked hard to try and get the production quality of it really great, worked really hard on the songs and um, someone came along and wanted to start pushing those songs to radio in Australia and we were excited by this and didn't think anything of it. Uh, that record we had four top ten singles and uh, my first number one. That led us to coming over to Nashville to record a record with Charlie Peacock. We took that one back and had another three number ones uh, from that record and most played artist in Australia, most played song in Australia. And these are on charts with, you know, everyone, Jars of Clay, Third Day, uh, all those guys. And um, suddenly our touring in Australia got smaller. Uh, our shows got bigger and our touring got smaller. Uh, there's only 21 million people in Australia. Um, and so we found that uh, after doing a month of good touring, we had done our touring and so we had the chance to move to America and that's what brought us here. And we've been here for the last uh, five years and uh, been playing around America and uh, the UK and back in Australia and it's been uh, an incredible journey so far and I have no doubt it will be uh, even more strange and incredible. Give him to this love.